Hello, everybody, and welcome again to Faith on Friday Extra. This series is all about highlighting people, topics, and businesses that I know you will find inspiring, interesting, and so much fun. And I'm your host, Ricky Smith. You guys, now, y'all have all heard about coaches and coaching, and there's a coach for everything and everybody. But where do coaches come from? You know, I don't know. But I have a guest who's going to explain a great many things to us. Her name is Dr. Patrice Carter. She is the CEO and president of Breakpoint Coaching, LLC. Y'all say hello to Dr. Patrice. Hey, guys. (laughs) Dr. Patrice, thank you so much for joining us. I appreciate your time. Thank you for having me. I'm so excited to be here with you. (laughs) Well, this is going to be fun, y'all. So y'all who don't know, Dr. Patrice is hilarious. And so we're going to have a lot of fun today. But let's just, I <laughs> Dr. Patrice, tell me a little bit about your coaching journey. Where did Breakpoint get started? That is such a great question. So Breakpoint got started, I'll say first in eternity, because I just want to give God glory for that. Uh, anybody that he calls as a coach was already ordained in eternity. So for anyone listening, just know that's you. And then it officially started one day when I was at my desk, I worked for a government program. And during that time, I hated every day of my life. And I begged God literally to fire me from that job. But he shared with me one day that I was going to be a life coach and that I would take all the things that he's given me and giving back to other people in that way. And as a gift. And so it made sense for me because I was always that person that people told all their stuff to like, I could be in the grocery store working in the bank where I worked previously. And people would literally tell me their life story. We would never get to the business at hand. And I believe that eventually he began to also give me this huge download of wisdom. So not only was I able to listen, but I was able to help. And so it's been 13 years since he called me away from that position and onto this journey of marketplace ministry as a life coach. Wow. That is a life coach trainer. Yeah. Yeah. That's the part I really am interested in because I know one of the things on your website, you know, and your YouTube channel, by the way, y'all check out our YouTube channel. She is so funny. So Mm -hmm. YouTube channel, you talk about the coaches that have been trained versus the ones that haven't been trained. What's the difference and why is training as a life coach important? That's a great question too. Coach Rick, you ask such great questions. You must have had awesome training now. <laughs> I just play. Okay, so, full disclosure, is- y'all. I have taken her breakpoint coaching class. And trust me, it is amazing. So and she teaches well. So yeah, it's a thing. Continue, playing. Dr. Patrice. Uh, okay, thank you. I'll carry on now. So uh, with that. Just I want to caveat this by saying that there are people that God has called to coaching that may not initially get certified or maybe he's not leading you to be certified. And that was definitely my story. So when he called me 13 plus years ago, I asked him specifically at the time that I heard the call, I said, Lord, do I need to get a certification? And he said, no, not yet. So I literally was a life coach and coached for about seven years, six years before I got my Christian life coaching certification. But in that God raised up a mentor. So I wasn't out there just on my own, you know, kind of flapping in the wind. I had help. But from there, around that six year mark, seven year mark, the Holy Spirit said to me, you need to go on and get your certification because where I'm taking you, you're going to need it. And I didn't even know that I was going to be opening a coaching school or that this would become part of my journey. And so I went, I got the training and the difference that I saw immediately upon graduation was that I had been telling people and ministering to people all along because coaching is not asking and it's not, it's not telling it's asking and it's not mentoring. It's not uh, counseling. It is all about asking powerful questions predicated on a great tool. I say a Christian coaching tool and the Holy spirit and what the client provides in terms of what they share from their heart and what they want from coaching. And it's about listening. So active listening to the client and actively listening to the Holy spirit and marrying those things together. So I just was so grateful that I had that training because it's really the thing that sets a coach apart from someone who maybe calls himself a coach, but really is doing a lot of telling And from a spiritual standpoint, when you're doing all that ministering, if you will, and prophesying and, you know, telling Mm -hmm. and leading and guiding, it's exhausting. 
Uh, because depending on the type of client, it can be a very heavy lift and a heavy pull on your anointing. And so coaching, Christian life coaching just balances all that out because we teach you how to um, how to marry that together and how to really walk from the standpoint that the client has everything in them that they will ever need. And I believe mm-hmm. that. So before I was certified and train myself, I thought that I was here and the client was here, like, follow me, like, I'm going to fix your life, you know, in quotation marks, <laughs> I have all the answers, so dumb, and, um, but it wasn't true, you in a coaching setting, the client and the coach are co-equals, and if anybody's in charge, it's the client, because they're paying, and because they have all the information. I love, I love what you just said, two mm-hmm. things, one, they're paying, and then the other thing is that everything that they have, everything that they need is already in them. Absolutely. I like also that you said, you know, you were coaching before you got certified, but you were also called to be a coach. Absolutely. In your experience, how much damage have you seen coaches do to people who may not be certified or who've never been trained? So I don't know that I've actually physically seen damage myself, but I think about myself and I, and that was one thing that I just felt horrified about <laughs> when I realized that I had been doing it wrong. Mm. God said, give yourself grace because I didn't tell, remember I told you don't get certified yet. Right. So right. for six years, um, I think this is an important nuance mm. is the Holy Spirit mentored me and God raised up a mentor That's to good. walk alongside me who was both a counselor and a coach. And mm. she felt led to serve me in that way and to, to take me under her wing and help prepare me with tools and things of that nature. So mm. um, I, I would say the damage that I feel I caused was doing a lot of telling Mm-hmm. A lot of yeah. you need to do this, 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 and leading people. And thank God they didn't die. You know, nobody went off a cliff. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't destroy their life. But God, right. he said, you know, this is too important for me to allow yeah. human hands to destroy. Mm-hmm. So his grace is mm-hmm. sufficient. Mm-hmm. But having said that, I saw an article last week on CNN, and I think it's Daniel. Oh, Omaleyu. I might be saying I'm saying his name incorrectly, but he's the guy who. Out. So he has a coach, and that woman, she's calling herself a life coach or a spiritual coach. And so, with her walking with him, he has literally walked away from his management team, his talent agency, wow. his um, all the people that have helped get him to where he is in his career. She has has inserted herself in that, and now everything has to come through her. And that's not coaching. Sure, that is not wow. a coach that's a manager, you know what I mean? And, yeah. that, and so okay. he's making these shifts in his career that mm-hmm. could be damaging ultimately. Mm-hmm. And so a coach is not going to come in and bring division, if you mm-hmm. will. And so to me, that was kind of scary, especially mm-hmm. with her saying she's a spiritual coach, a life coach. And it just sort of puts a blemish on the industry. And that's something that I think that we as life coaches, especially mm-hmm. Christian life coaches should work diligently to mm-hmm. um to not do that we want to come with the spirit of excellence and the spirit of god right. and really make coaching the best it can be wow that's awesome you said coaching as an industry a lot of people have heard of life coaches seen mm-hmm. them call themselves life coaching what mm-hmm. is it about the industry that you've seen that has changed so what i've seen <laughs> I'm laughing because it's like I had this white Jetta, right? I bought this white Jetta a long time ago. And before I bought that white Jetta, I never noticed a white Jetta. When the weekend that I bought that white Jetta, I promise you every other vehicle was a white Jetta. We've all been there. It was all been <laughs> so there. It, feels that, it felt that way when I became a life coach, um, that everyone was a life coach and everyone mm-hmm. was calling themselves life coaches. And I've seen it just multiply. And yeah. so in one regard, in one sense, that's great because- we can't individually serve everybody that needs help. Mm -hmm. And so it's really important that life coaches, Christian life coaches, I want to be specific. That's just my ministry be that they be released into their respective vineyards because help is needed in the earth realm. But that said, um, when there are so many coaches and we're not regulated, our industry is not currently regulated. Right then there won't, there's not standardization in some regards in terms of how people conduct themselves as life coaches in their business. So I've seen um, that people don't conduct themselves with integrity um, or they don't have a business sense. And so maybe they're a life coach, but they don't, they're not organized or they don't have the follow-up or their, you know, their materials, I would say their materials are social proof, like their website and things of that nature just don't Mm -hmm. professionally or they're not clear. And I think those things are very important because they 
quality. The other piece is not having a model to follow. And I think that's significant because entering a coaching conversation with a client is is equally as important as exiting a conversation with a client. Right. And sure that we, in the middle of that, address their need and their desire. Mm-hmm. So with that, coming back full circle to answer your question, there are two accrediting bodies mm-hmm. for coaching. And if I were going to, if I were still a brand new baby person looking for um, a coaching school or even mm-hmm. now an advanced coach, I would look for a program that's credential or um, set up or set apart in that way. So the International mm-hmm. Coaching Federation and the Center for Credentialing and Education, mm-hmm. there, uh, there's also the ACC, I think AAC or, and some other international accrediting bodies. So I think mm-hmm. that's very important for anyone that's considering a life coach training program that you mm-hmm. find out is that mm-hmm. agency that you're looking to for training, are they regulated, at least in that sense of being connected to an accrediting body um, mm-hmm. so that there's oversight and an ethics um, mm-hmm. A, a, what do you call it? A um, an ethics statement or a guidelines that they follow, and so we follow and fall under the Center for Credentialing and Education, and so we are established a cred- credential by them, and we also follow their ethical guidelines, which align also with the International Coaching Federation. So I hope that when you're looking at that, you know, yeah. at, at the coaching, there's so much mm-hmm. stuff out there and available. Now we've had coaches on the program before. Now, mm-hmm. they have different niches, they have different mm-hmm. callings, but you're the first one that has said that you have a school. So what makes your school different than anybody else's? Jesus. <laughs> well, and that'll Jesus, do it. <laughs> be me. <laughs> and I say that with all like humility and, and, um, and laughter because we have to know that we're the thing that God has called. We're the, the one that God has positioned. And so the Bible says to let your light so shine before men that they will see your good works and glorify him. Yeah. And so often somebody right now or that's going to be watching this, God has called them to establish a school, mm-hmm. but they're holding wow. back, mm-hmm. you know, because they right. don't want to be seen a certain way. They don't want to come across as haughty or what does she know? You know what God gave you. So mm-hmm. in that, that Jesus, Jesus, the Holy Spirit, God, that whole Trinity package is the one thing that sets us apart, like light years, quantum years, quantum acceleration ahead of any other school. That's right. I can say that with all surety because he yeah. walked with us and we walk with him. Mm-hmm. And so that sets us apart. I set us apart because he's given me the mantle to carry mm-hmm. it. And I care mm-hmm. about it. And I don't just see it as a Christian coaching school. I see this as a ministry and we're creating and making disciples. So we're wow. birthing out disciples. And so, I and it. I feel that in the spirit, like, so when we graduate coaches, we're mm-hmm. not just graduating them to go into, you know, to say, oh, I'm a life coach. We're graduating mm-hmm. coaches that are biblically and foundationally and spiritually sound. Mm-hmm. They skill, they're skilled. So they have the skill of coaching using a Christian model and they own a business. So we teach mm-hmm. them um, and, and help them to develop their business. So when they mm-hmm. leave, not only are they skilled, they own a coaching business and yeah. it is fully established and set up. In fact, one of their assignments, as you know, is to get your first client before you graduate. So we're all about also um, building wealth and mm-hmm. building the kingdom. So we want to establish marketplace ministries that also bring wealth and create legacy. And so the the other piece that God is leading me to is now I'm going to start mentoring. So if there are other coaches that want to have their own school, their own coaching, Mm. then I'm going to take them by the, you know, by the hand it's going to cost, but it's an investment Mm -hmm. to help develop other coach training programs and coach trainings because we have to multiply the kingdom. So I'm not trying to, so if you're looking for a school, you want to look for, again, accreditation and credentialing, Mm -hmm. you want to look for social proof. So we've graduated well over 60, 70 plus coaches, both of our live program. Yep. And e-programs, we have an amazing staff. So I have great faculty. So I have faculty that works with me. I'm not a one man show. Mm -hmm. Um, So we have that also, you want it to be robust and industry specific. So mm-hmm. with that, you know, aligning, looking at the standards of that, um, that organization. So with our organization, there are seven tenants, seven that okay. the CEO <laughs> has us cover. And that is professional or business, if you will, mm-hmm. um, risk management. And then also the other ones, the other four, you can look up on CC's website, but it's really about understanding how to coach and what makes a formal coaching relationship. So all those things set us apart. Mm-hmm. Not only that, I would say the last thing is we have fun while we get the work done. Sure. So you know, we are effective, but we're also, you will not out fun breakpoint coaching. <laughs> <laughs> I 
I can attest to that. Look, yeah. y'all, this conversation mm-hmm. is going to go on forever because she is hilarious. Yeah. But don't worry, all of her contact information will be down in the description below. So if you mm-hmm. are looking for a coach, if you're looking for a mentor, if you are looking for a certification through Christian Life Coaching, you can always touch base with Breakpoint Coaching LLC. And trust me, it'll all be down there. But don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel as well and give us a thumbs up. It's important. Dr. Patrice, my friend, before I let you go... <laughs> Okay. We got to play our So this game is so simple. If the game is called this or that, and Mm -hmm. I'm just going to give you a choice of two different things and you off the top of your head, just let me know which one you like the best. It's that simple. Are you ready to play? Let me put my listening ears on so I can (laughs) listen to me. Okay. I'm ready. (laughs) Here we go. (laughs) Y'all. Flowers or plants? Oh, plants. Mm. Hotel or tent? If it's glamping, I'll pick tent. Yes, <laughs> glamping is life. I'm not going out there with no bugs, though. I can't. Water <laughs> or an amusement park? Amusement park. Mm. Practical joker or I don't play like that? A practical joker. Yeah, I knew that already. I didn't even know I asked. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Candlelight or moonlight? Oh, moonlight. Ah, planner or make it up as you go. I'm definitely a planner, but a happy mix of both as well. Yeah, that's good. A happy mix. Do you go all day or do you need a nap? I go all day. Really? I'm surprised. I would think that you would need a nap. I Maybe it's just me because I need a nap. All oh, right. Well, that's like what I must sleep. Like, what? <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. flesh and blood has not revealed that to you because I do love naps. I just don't either get to take them or I've not really allowed myself to take okay. them. Okay. I've never met a nap that I didn't love. So that, you are speaking um, correctly. God is showing you accurately. Okay. <laughs> but I just push past it and I go all day, but I'm going to get better. There you go. Okay. When you're talking, is it pecan or pecan? Pecan. Okay. I'm a southerner. You, Come on, guys. It's I know. I would think that it was the other way around. I but. was going to say, but some parts of the deep south, I'm not deep south, okay. um, probably would say pecan. Okay. That's so mm-hmm. funny. I'm See, you just never know. I'm We're southern, not country, so it's pecan. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for clearing that up for us. And now you know. Okay. <laughs> you meet somebody for the first time. What do you notice? Their eyes or their smile? Hmm. I would probably say their eyes because I'm looking, I'm always trying to read people just spiritually Mm. to see if there's a, if this is something God wants me to minister to someone that needs something and you know, what's in their eyes. Yeah, that's good for you personally. Are you a words of affirmation person or an acts of service kind of person? Hmm. I'm acts of service because I cannot stand somebody who won't walk and talk and be about it all together at the same time. Like, don't talk me to death, sis. (laughs) Be about your business. <laughs> oh my gosh. And finally, what would you tell your younger self right now? I would say, girl, you are so fire. Like you are amazing, lit, funny, beautiful, mm. intelligent, anointed. Um, the world is just not ready for you, but God has sent you into the world to just be a light and just I want you to go and just blind people. Oh, I love that so much. Yeah, because I just didn't believe that and for the longest time. Yeah, a lot of us are in that same boat. Look, everybody, thank you so much for joining us. Dr. Patrice, thank you for your time. This has been so much fun. Thank you. God bless (laughs) you guys. Thank you. All right, everybody, that's it for this time. But don't worry, I'll see you next time on Extra.